Hello again, this is David, the Director of Marketing and Communications at Kaduk Musical Instruments. And uh, I'm joined here today by Mr. Thomas Kaduk, the founder of Kaduk Musical Instruments himself. Hi there. Hi. Yes, um, we have made a last video about uh, the soundboard in particular and different functions of a soundboard. And today we're going to elabor uh, elaborate a bit more about um, on, on waveforms and uh, what they look like and uh, what function they have in a, in a piano. So um, maybe we could just have a short uh, recapitulation of the uh, last video. So the functions of the soundboard. Yeah, shall I uh, do that? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, last video, David explained the basic physics behind uh, behind the soundboard and the function of the soundboard. Um, so first of all, the soundboard creates an impedance match with between the string and the air, so that we can actually hear the piano. Otherwise, we wouldn't really hear much of the energy, it wouldn't really cross mm -hmm. into the air, but it would ring for a very, very long time without a soundboard. Um, so one is just make us hear it. Two is it is a filter. Um, it, it is an a, acoustic filter, actually quite similar to the filters in synthesizers. Yeah, in, in exactly. Just... So uh, subtractive synthesis is, is yeah. more or less the principle. Yeah, subtractive yeah. synthesis is, is is or one mostly of the, the resistive component of mm -hmm. uh, of the impedance side, yes. and then the reactive component is more similar to the main component of an FM synthesizer. Yeah. For those who are familiar with uh, uh, analog synthesizers, synthesizers. With, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, indeed, the uh, reactive component and, and and the impedance is a sort of resistance for um, for oscillating systems, mm -hmm. um, but the reactive component doesn't dissipate energy. It only creates a phase delay, so it's a buffering system. So it stores energy and gives it back exactly. in another moment, but it it hinders the passing through of the energy. Yes. And basically, all of the piano is just playing with impedance. If you understand mm -hmm. the children's swing, then you can make a piano. More or less, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it sounds a bit easier maybe than it uh, than it is uh, <laughs> in practice, but that's um, to make it simple. Well, that's that's basically what it is. So um, today we're going to talk about um, oscillations, basically, and the different oscillations in the piano as a system uh, uh, as a whole. So, um, well, uh, what can we what can we, what can we say about um, oscillators? Well, in the piano, the strings are the main oscillators, and mm -hmm. we have um, uh, for every key one or a set of oscillators. Yes. Um, so the, the the low notes have just one uh, string, so one one oscillator, yeah. and yeah. the higher notes there are two strings or three two or strings. Three, yeah. yeah. Uh, and even in some pianos, you have four, uh, even not st strung strings, struck strings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which are the, uh, the oscillator, the main oscillator. Of course, there's a lot mm -hmm. that's oscillating in the piano, but the string is the, the main oscillator that's mm -hmm. tuned to every mm -hmm. specific tone that we yeah. need. So um, let's take a, a little step back and, and just talk about uh, uh, waveforms, because um, I think uh, a, a good example that everybody knows is the, the sinus wave. It's the most uh, simple wave that there is. We can show you a picture. It's just it's basically just uh, um, yeah a simple waveform. Yeah, and let's show it in so, screen. And exactly. you and in the sinus wave, you can see that it has no mm. overtones. And mm. so in, in the time domain, you see the recognizable sign, like you know. And yeah. in the frequency domain, you just have one peak mm -hmm. corresponding to which sinus it is. Exactly. Yeah. And then there, well, there are other kinds of waveforms that are uh, well known, like the um, square the, the, wave, yeah, the, or the, the, the salt, the yeah. or the triangular, or whatever. Yeah, and they have different characteristics. So, um, well, knowing this, so knowing these very simple waveforms, we can now maybe take it a bit a, a step further and look at what kind of waveforms we actually have in a piano. So. Maybe you could explain what happens with the, the, the piano string. What kind of waveform does it uh, mm -hmm. does it take? Yeah. Well, first it's it's maybe interesting to um, to maybe hear a sawtooth or a square wave or something. We can mm -hmm. edit it here in the video. Yes, um, absolutely. And then you see it in the time domain and in the frequency domain, and you see that all other waveforms except for the basic sinus forms have overtones. Mm -hmm. And we'll see now what overtones are. Yeah. Um, 
So the string, we can use the, the, the wave transmission line again. Absolutely, yeah, um, it's a good example. Yeah, uh, let's make it run and edit it in. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have this wave transmission line, where's the, oh, here's the camera, um, then uh, let's say it is one string of the piano. Here is mm -hmm. the agraf and here's the bridge. So it's yeah. terminated at both the agraf and the bridge. Yes. And you strike it maybe up to one seventh, depending on the piano design. Um, mm -hmm. But usually in a yeah, note. So that's where the hammer hits the string at that specific point. So and then yeah. uh, a, a waveform is created or? Um... Yeah, well, first of all, um, let's say uh, you strike it with amplitude two on an imaginary scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it goes two up and then the waveform will split into amplitude one because amplitude one goes in that way yeah. and, and amplitude goes yeah. one goes into that direction. So to the short mm -hmm. end to the agraf and to the long end of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Once it hits the first note, which is the agraf, then it will flip around like we've yeah. seen in the... Uh, That's in a, the, the wave transmission line, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it will go back mm -hmm. while this is still traveling yeah, further. Still traveling further and then it hits the, uh, yeah, the bridge first, at this size. Yeah, it oh. hits the hammer here because the hammer is still connected. So okay, this is yeah. again a note from which it turns back. Because the hammer, it, it takes, well, the, the, the wave is uh, traveling really fast. Mm -hmm. So the the moment that the hammer hits, uh, it, it takes some time. So the, the, the hammer hits and it stays there for um, a couple of um, milliseconds yeah. or, yeah. Yeah. A short period of time, but long enough for the wave to already travel to the agraf and back. So it, it hits I the hammer. It can easily again. hit uh, seven waves uh, before okay. it finally releases. Yeah. Um, and... Um, yes, okay, so it travels into that direction, into that direction, and then at some point this one returns and this one is traveling there, so mm -hmm. it will interfere here, so you have constructed, constructive or deconstructive interference, making it either, well, bigger or, or zero or minus mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and if we do this, uh, then there will arise one pattern of pluses mm -hmm. and minuses, yeah. uh, and this one pattern will travel each so many milliseconds past the bridge and yes. that is the waveform. And okay. actually, um, um, well, if we, I, I can even with my mobile phone record this yeah. thing on this Yeah, piano. we've done that and it's maybe nice to, to see an example. So let's, let's show the example and, yeah. uh, and see what happens there. And the nice thing is that because it's not an expensive thing, but just my mobile phone on super slow-mo. Yeah record function but you it can already do it shows as well. yeah you can do yeah you can do it as home but it already shows what is happening there so yeah. that's interesting um but we can also draw it and i think that's yeah that's a good example as well so we'll yeah. show the the drawings um and what you can see is that uh compared to the, the very simple sinus wave is that a more complex pattern emerges here right mm -hmm. um and the pattern in 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 uh the piano string can become well quite uh, intricate, quite complex uh, because of the different elements involved. Mm -hmm. So um, there's the hammer and the hammer also has uh, a role to play and quite an important role to play in how the string is, is driven into resonance. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe tell us a bit about that? Uh, yes, um, of course. If you, well, the string has a certain uh, yield strength. Um, so it, yeah. Maybe I should make it a little bit simpler. The string is not a metal bar. It's just a string, so it can mm -hmm. move. It's it's flexible. Yeah. Because if it was a super stiff, meter-thick diamond bar, then it wouldn't yeah. really bend. But here, when the hammer hits it, it bends yeah. where you hit it. Exactly. Uh, and therefore, it behaves as our wave transmission line, and therefore, this can travel through. Mm -hmm. So, then there is the interaction between the segment of the string which um, first moves because it's only a segment that moves and the rest is still just a straight line mm -hmm. in first instance. Um, We're talking about super, super slow-mo here, right? Yeah. Um, very yeah. much delayed. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, yeah. Um, and this segment of the string has its own stiffness, its own E-module, e Young's modulus or whatever you work with. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it has its own mass or it is three strings combined with their own modulus and their own mass. So it's just yes. times three, three times the stiffness, three times the mass. Yeah. Um, 
which has to flex. So again, you have a system that has a certain inertia of the mass and you have a certain stiffness, mm -hmm. which we knew from, which we know from the, uh, from the swing. Yeah. Um, and the hammer has the same as well because the hammer, um, yeah, we have the, uh, a good example here, probably. Yeah. Yeah. This is in, uh, so, yeah, I can see yeah. it. So this is a, a, this is a grand piano action. With some markings on it for, <laughs> for some uh, tracking, motion, yeah. Uh, yeah. tracking, <laughs> motion capturing. Um, so um, you have this wooden core and this felt around, and actually you have a few layers of felt, mm -hmm. um, and the felt itself is a spring. Uh, it, you know, it it feels kind of hard, but it's still with the forces mm -hmm. involved it it um yeah it moves it's it's yeah. Uh, yeah yeah um and more importantly the hammer the the whole hammer the hammer shank uh, yeah. with the head is also uh, a spring yeah because this part will definitely bend when it mm -hmm. hits uh, the the string uh, and it has a mass so both systems, of course, have a resistive component and a reactive component. Mm -hmm. um, but the system of the hammer shank has the most important reactive component. Of course, a lot of heat is introduced when you do it, so it's yeah. also a resistive component. But most of all, it's it's it, it's it's most significant part is reactive, and the most significant part of the uh, felt head. Is yes. resistive. So, um, so the hysteresis of this of this felt, which mm -hmm. which is the the difference with the stress strain curve. So, you have the, the loading and the unloading, which yeah. follows a different pattern, and in between mm -hmm. is heat that is generated. Uh, is a resistive component. So, as long as this is connected with a string, which is a few vibrations, yes, it will damp actually um, in a frequency independent way yeah. so it will damp uh, all the frequencies that are involved all the frequencies that, that yes. go through it doesn't doesn't matter which frequencies yes, there are yes so, yeah. yes well yeah, so. not completely because not it also has a reactive component mm, but, but the, the yeah. strongest component is resistive yeah. but this is the this is typical of the um, uh, the resistive component component right that it's it uh, damps all the frequencies generates so heat frequency uh, yeah. uh, it's not dependent it hates uh, movement in general frequency. doesn't uh, it's not interested in frequencies exactly. well we've talked about all about this in the the last video so, yeah. um, and the other one is the reactive component mm -hmm. um, and that is this flex so this is you can hardly see it now yeah, but it feels also really stiff, a little but bit flexible yeah, yeah. it's, it's made, of, made of wood or did this particular uh, this one yes yeah. and um, and the way this is vibrating um, um, creates the reactive component so um, depending on the design and, and how the shank and the hammer are tuned and, and in the better pianos, mm. they are tuned and actually in yeah. the past all shanks yeah. were tuned. Um, so you, you're, you're saying that actually the, 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 the hammer shank and the, and the hammer they, they are, are also tuned in a, in a certain frequency yeah. and that is also important for uh, uh, the string that it hits. Yeah. And uh, I believe that in one of our last videos we've talked about is that they, when they had uh, a lot of access to wood, to uh, wood as a, as a material, that they could just make a lot of uh, these uh, uh, shanks and just throw uh, almost all of them away and only keep the very best ones. And that was why these, these old pianos uh, in, in the past uh, uh, were so, so great, were such unique and uh, excellent instruments. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually met one, um, uh, one old guy who worked at the Bechstein factory all right was yeah. <laughs> was explaining how they uh, did that in um, <laughs> yeah. in the good old germany <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yes. yeah how, how was it well uh, they had this um sort of uh, uh um sergeant how do you say it in the english the sergeant uh, yeah or the sergeant, yeah, yes. just a yeah, supervisor who was, yeah. yeah who was walking uh, behind them and uh, mm -hmm. and then they had to to first sort the hammer stick. So first of all, they were tested if they, if they, well, yes, if yeah. they bend it too much or if it was yeah. stiff, etc. They had their test methods, and yeah. they, they. So I think maybe ninety-five percent of the sticks were immediately <laughs> used just for heating the factory, just yeah. to the fire. <laughs> but maybe five percent of the sticks, hammer shanks, were left. <laughs> yeah. Um, and these had to be sorted first on just their own frequency. So okay, they yeah. had to. Um, 
to test this and listen or how yeah, do you do it? Clink, yeah, clink, I don't know how to say yeah. it in English, but they just... Yeah. They were hitting these... Yeah, I only have one there. Yeah, mm. they were hitting these, um, these sticks on each other. Yeah. And then they had to put them on the right uh, uh, pile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then this, this sergeant was walking uh, behind them who was uh, very experienced with this. Yeah. And uh, so now and then you hear... Nein! <laughs> <laughs> Which is German for no, for those who yes. <laughs> don't speak German. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, and then, and then, if if he heard nine three times, that meant that he had to go to the French polishing. And uh, oh, yeah, then <laughs> that he was, was doing <laughs> that for several months. <laughs> and of course, with the French polishing, and there's yeah. all alcohol involved. So uh, every time you went completely you just drunk, just be passed out. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but at least they yeah. cared. Um, about yeah, they care deeply about uh, perfection. <laughs> yeah. So okay, this is this is quite interesting. So the the the, the hammer shanks they're they're tuned uh, in a, a certain frequency, which is um, uh, uh, adjusted to to uh, the string. So it's it's matched to to the string that it's uh, that is going to hit. Yeah. So there has to be a match between uh, these two frequencies to create the the, the optimal sounds that you can. Yeah. Well, create. You, well. You, you need to have. Um... Uh, an impedance match again. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah. just as we saw in the, in the wave transmission line, um, yeah. if you... Um, uh, yeah, because uh, the hammer with the string is connected for some time. Mm -hmm. And if and if the, 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 the hammer shank with the hammer head is tuned into a different yeah. frequency, then it will hinder um, yeah. the sound. You know? The transmission of the, the frequency will not be yeah. uh, as perfect or as good as you yeah. would want it to be. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is stuff that we've all discussed in the... Uh, the last video. Um, what I'm interesting now, interested in now is um, how can you actually um, uh, manipulate the sound? Uh, um, we've talked about this. So how can a pianist actually uh, control the sound? Uh, because you also hit the um, uh, the key, of course. Um, the, ha the 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 hammer uh, hits the string. So. What changes can you make in order to, to have a better control of the sound or manipulate it in a certain way? Well, with all the oscillating systems, the oscillators themselves have a, a will. So uh, mm -hmm. that's the thing of impedance. So, so they, they prefer their own resonance frequency. Yes, uh, so the, yeah. the admittance at one frequency, is the, the admittance is the inverse of the impedance. Yeah. So the ad admittance is... Um, uh, well, very high for for the frequency at which the impedance is zero. So, every mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have the good old uh, Newton's cradle again. Yeah. So, of course, here if we can we do it like this? Yes. Mm -hmm. If we have this, can you see this? I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll do a close yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, this has a certain length, and the mass is also a component of the restoring force. Uh, and end of the uh, continuing force, so yeah. it, it cancels out. But if you let this swing, it will always swing just in this one frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's and well, the piano is full of of these kind of systems. Yeah. And what we can maybe show with a close up is what would happen if we just I don't know, twist this around, let it go from another angle. Yeah. Is this in? Yeah, I don't know. Well, then you see. See, it now already starts to yeah. have this um, a very chaotic uh, uh, movement, actually. In the beginning, right? but now it's it yeah. Now, it, now it. it's it's restoring yeah. and it's it's going to its own preferred movement, which is just the the, the swing again. Yeah. yeah. So and that's that's what is happening with the piano all the time. Yeah. So you you hit it uh, in a certain way, and it's it's not not perfect, but then uh, well that that gets restored because of the. Um, well, the the preferred resonance frequency of of this uh, of all the components. All the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. And what does this mean for the, the control that you have? Because the, the piano always wants to. Um, well, the piano will always restore its sound to the yeah. sound that it likes. But at the yeah. beginning of the of the hit, uh, mm -hmm. you have an enormous amount of control actually, but that's only the first few milliseconds. Okay. Um, and well, so what we actually should look at is not one oscillator because we showed the, the swing, mm -hmm, yeah. but two oscillators as soon as you have a system of two oscillators connected somehow. Yeah. Uh, Which is, well, what we've shown, the, the string and the, the hammer, so that, that are, those yeah. are already two oscillating systems that yeah, are yeah, interacting yeah. with each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and then you get the chaotic system and maybe it's more interesting to actually look well we started at the soundboard so maybe mm -hmm. let's connect the string to the soundboard first yes absolutely yeah. for the viewers so um so the soundboard you have you have these three strings for one uh for one uh, mm -hmm. um it's very fast it's not tuned <laughs> um for one tone these three strings are uh, pressing on the on the bridge yeah. and when this sort of weird impulse wave so it's uh, the piano has a very thin waveform um because if if this is the time domain then here you have this wiggle and here it's zero yeah and again you have here this wiggle zero wiggle zero and for example if it was a fat sound then it was something maximum most of the time that's what sounds fat but this is very right. thin um the oscillator makes a very thin sound but the end yeah. is actually quite thick still the sound of the piano but mm -hmm. um and that's because of the soundboard, because yes. of the, uh, yeah. all the buffering uh, of the soundboard. Exactly, yeah. and the slower release of everything and yeah. the mixing up. Yeah. Um, but what you see is, first of all, these are three strings which are connected via this bridge, but mm -hmm. they are they are not um, they are not how do you say it? The bridge is also not perfectly stiff, so right. yeah. this starts to interact with each other. And it yeah. are really three different oscillating systems, and especially mm -hmm. actually your tuner has quite an influence on the impedance between the string and the soundboard. If you have okay. a very good tuner, yeah. he doesn't just use the computer but also listens. Okay, so it's, <laughs> or just yeah. listens, <laughs> doesn't use the computer. Also possible. All right. I'm never against computers, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is, uh, no. But it's, it's not. It's not as simple. So tuning a piano is, is really an art form. It's yeah, not yeah. not as uh, simple I, as just. I, I can't tune. I have okay. no idea how to tune. <laughs> but. Um, Don't admit it. No. <laughs> Forget <laughs> yes. that he said that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So no, but that's a, that's a different art form, tuning mm -hmm. piano. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I continue. Yeah. Um, so the tuner should detune the unisons yeah. because if they are exactly in tune, the the impedance uh, um, of the soundboard, um, looking from the soundboard towards the strings, is mm. very low. So the admittance is very high. So you have a very short tone. Yeah. So your tuner has to actually make your tone longer by detuning the unisons, yeah. uh, but not that much. No. If you start but just hearing a fraction, just a little course, bit. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Really, a tiny mm. bit. Um, and also it has to match with all the rest. It's yeah. horrible tuning, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, this thing not being in tune is already three oscillators um, working on just a slightly different rate, interacting with each other. Yeah. Well, then you have the soundboard with all the different components with the ribs, which are also oscillators. Yeah, yeah. And it's one big oscillator, depending on the frequency yeah. it chooses larger or smaller areas yeah. to yeah. run through um so you get a chaotic system yeah so really co complex uh, um oscillations emerge yeah just by hitting even one string uh, or and, and let alone just uh, uh well a lot of uh, keys uh, and, even if yeah. you hit just one string one of the bass strings then mm -hmm. you already uh, if, if you neglect the oscillations of the key itself mm -hmm. which indeed are not that significant i mean if you really work on the best of the best of the best instrument then yeah. you might want to consider the oscillations of the key itself but yeah the okay, effect but yeah. in the soundboard is really really small all right yeah um but okay you, yeah. you can measure it and mm. you could try no, but there are it. enough elements that are, are more uh, that have more influence in, course, the, in the, yes. the final uh, tone that's, uh, that yeah. is created yeah yeah um and the hammer and the hammer shank is already quite quite big influence yeah uh, so that the hammer and hammer shank are already two oscillators two different oscillators that hits our main oscillator the string yeah. well then you have the oscillating system of the string which has its own characteristic and frequency mm -hmm. and tries to well smooth out yeah and uh, with its own internal damping low internal damping but still internal damping which is friction you also have the reactive yeah. component the interaction with the hammer then you have the interaction with the bridge uh, with the soundboard with the air which is also just yeah. kind of interaction also, in yeah. the air you have the walls <laughs> the the other piano mm. or that piano i don't yeah. know um so there's a lot of interaction so the actually yeah it's a chaotic system 
Mm-hmm. Um, so we can maybe explain what a chaotic system, yeah. or maybe uh, tell us a bit more about a chaos uh, theory, because yeah. that's basically what is what is involved here, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Well, they um, they invented in a, they invented. Well, well, I don't know if you can. Invent they discovered or they physics, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> came up with the theory or the yeah. yeah. It's, it's a theory, so well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think in the fifties uh-huh, yeah. um, with uh, Lorenz, uh, who wanted to predict the weather. Yeah. Uh, so he made this computer model and he yeah. tried to well predict the weather, yeah. but um, he found out that if he um, yeah, changed, yeah. there was just if, if there were really small uh, variations in in the the, the basic uh, inputs, then yeah, the outcome was completely different. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and <laughs> every chaotic system is deterministic, so. If it's you, still deterministic. Yeah, yeah but if you know the exact parameters, yeah. you know exactly exactly what it will do. Mm-hmm. Only to know the parameters of a so highly input sensitive system is that's very the, difficult. Yeah, it's the weather. So that, that's that's almost well, that's that's impossible. I mean, they, they can't really predict it for more than, than a couple of days ahead. So, yeah, indeed, yeah. for a couple <laughs> of days. That's fly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. well, for what will that do? I mean, if you if you kill the fly, uh, maybe the weather will, will completely change in exactly. China. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you all know yeah. probably not saying by which uh, the chaos theory is explained that if one butterfly flaps its wings in China then it will maybe cause uh, a hurricane in, uh, the, in the United States or something <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's yeah one of the uh, well, the more catchy and uh, yeah. popular ways to, to explain um, what chaos what chaos theory is about yeah, yeah but what yeah. I found interesting is that you mentioned the the well how good we can predict the weather yeah. so for the first few days we can sort of predict it yeah but after a while yeah you get lost yeah. but you do know the pattern we can predict the climate for some years exactly but we, we, yeah. we can say well in in five years it will go in this and that direction but mm-hmm. we cannot say in in 10 days the weather <laughs> will be like that so yeah. you can um you, you well you know every oscillator ha- it is a sort of attractor so if you have one swing you know that it wants to move somewhere mm-hmm. in that area if you have another system Turning around, you know that it it wants to move in that area. So every oscillating part forms an attractor, and it will almost well no, it will never actually use the same route, but it will always always form the same pattern if you let it run for a long time. Yeah. So also with the piano, if you just uh, hit a key, record it for mm-hmm. uh, twenty seconds. And you do it with the same intensity. So let's say we use a linear induction motor. We program it to some um, some specific, maybe parabolic curve on, with yeah. some speed force, whatever. Um, then, if we do that hundred times, and we record twenty seconds, you'll get the exact same pattern as the other two hundred times that you tried yeah. afterwards. Um, if you know that the input is exactly the same, if it's just, yeah. No, no, or, no. Even if it's or, roughly the same. Okay, yeah, yeah. But if you um, use this very highly advanced motor and you do this and you and you only measure the first two milliseconds, mm-hmm. then it will never be the same because this highly advanced motor cannot do twice exactly the same thing. If it's just a little bit different mm. and it's... It becomes really, really. Okay. Different. There was this yeah. video on um, on YouTube um, about someone who um, who used negative resistance. He created an mm-hmm. electronical circuit with negative yeah. r- impedance, actually. Um, and there you could see him showing on his scope. Uh, what was going on? Maybe okay. we can edit. So that certainly, in. yeah, a pattern that emerges. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll uh, edit in the the video. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, basically what we have here is uh, uh, working is, is the, the chaos theory. So uh, it basically means that you have uh, very small differences in input. You have a, a great uh, um, uh, well, uh, you have a very different uh, output that you can generate. Yeah. So, so one state is yeah. very hard to predict. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can predict if you know the input, but you don't know. So mm-hmm. it's very hard to predict one state. Exact, especially one. It's you can predict one state for the first few milliseconds if you're really good and trying to be really precise. But you cannot. You you cannot uh, predict the state during the rest of the time. Yeah. Um, but you can predict the pattern of states. So if you record for some time, you know it will sound like this. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, what implications does this ha does this have for for a pianist? Uh, well, you have to uh, you have only a very short time frame in which you have influence. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't uh, create your tone in the first few milliseconds, then you have no control at all. No. A violinist can, <laughs> can 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 correct even if even mm -hmm. if he plays the wrong note, he can even shift. yes no, slide a little bit so, over yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. But with well, a, a pianist. Um, well, I mean, we know that that certain pianists have certain sounds, yeah, and that seems hardly impossible for an instrument with just buttons yeah. that corrects uh, everything. But that sound uh, actually happens to be the difference of the first few milliseconds of mm. every note. Yeah. The so transient to, response. Yeah, yeah, so you have to be really proficient uh, as a pianist to to know what you are doing and to know how to to create a, a certain sound or to create differences in sounds just mm -hmm. by by hitting the uh, the key um, in a certain way um, you can have uh, really uh, differences in 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 output that yeah. you, and in 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 tone characteristics tonal characteristics yeah yeah, yeah. all right and I think um, something that we wanted to talk about a little bit is, is the, uh, the research that uh, Roland did, I think. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Roland. Of, yeah, of Roland. The, I, yeah, yeah, I think it was Roland who was the first to do that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they um, used recordings from a piano, a violin, yeah. uh, whatever. All different kind kinds of instruments. of instruments, yeah. Yeah, and they removed the first 40 milliseconds. 40 milliseconds, yeah. so, yeah. And the fun thing was that almost it's just a fraction, right? It's it's just, just, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, blinking with your eyes is two hundred milliseconds. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, right. But if you remove yeah. this this forty milliseconds, um, most of the people couldn't recognize the difference between a violin or a piano. Okay. That's even same. yeah. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. though, of course, uh, yeah, I guess we could. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, but, maybe the trained ear, but for yeah. yeah. It sounds it sounds uh, yeah. almost unbelievable, but it's it's just just forty milliseconds. That's the first all the 40 information about about the instrument, yeah. about the character of the instrument, etc. Yeah. Okay. And of course, the piano tone is very interesting because mm -hmm. of the uh, of the reactive component being being mm -hmm. well giving a, a very difficult impedance to to the higher overtones and them dying out earlier. Well, you have this. Yeah. Okay. So the, of course there are differences, yeah. but but still, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's yeah. So and I think um, what is interesting to to know here is that um, if you actually know how these systems work uh, and you you know a bit about chaos theory and actually how to to build an instrument, you can have more control, more influence over how the um, the final sound will um, will come out, how it how it how it will sound. So yeah, you you can you, you can make a. a well, uh, a, a better instrument, ba uh, instrument, basically. Yeah, uh, well, actually, they did make better instruments. Um, and there is a big difference in how mm -hmm. much you can control the tone mm -hmm. with some of the very best instruments uh, from the good old days. Uh, yeah. If you have this, this beautiful Roni shit we have there, for example, yeah, there you have quite some control, yeah. which you might not have on this uh, piano. Yeah. Um, so maybe uh, we can uh, um, go towards the end. Can we can we summarize uh, more or less what we've discussed? Uh, so yeah, we've okay. talked about so the different um, um, systems that are that are working here. So the the different oscillations. We've talked about chaos theory. Um, yeah, maybe we, maybe you can uh, uh, summarize it for uh, for everybody. Yeah. Well. Uh, okay. First a string. We now sort of know if if well. If we edit the the right pictures in this uh, conversation, mm -hmm. uh, how the waveform of a string as oscillator looks like, the very thin waveform with here some stuff and then nothing, um, we understand that this stuff is the thing that is pushing the soundboard via the bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, there the the rest we discussed in the last video. Um, we know that it's a chaotic interaction, which is highly input sensitive, um, but that will um, restore itself. It, we can we can show it on the on the Newton's cradle. If we twist one ball, let it fall, yeah. we'll show it once more. Yeah. Um, um, what else? Yes, and the hammer string interaction. 
Um, it yeah you yeah it might be actually interesting to either put it in this video or put it in another video to yeah to use the mocap system to capture this and show what is happening with the interaction yeah that would be uh, interesting to 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 make it more visible to uh, yeah. yeah to have a more visual explanation yeah. absolutely yeah yeah um yeah is that um and of course um the interesting thing is that the piano is is very easy uh, to learn just yeah pressing the, the piano key. now yeah it's very hard to master Absolutely. because you're the yeah. yeah, as a pianist you if you really want to have control over the tone you only have a few milliseconds of the time and it is with mm. the acceleration that's maybe nice to show maybe we have a piece of wood somewhere here yeah so one of the perks of being in the in the, the workplace work place, yeah, yes, well, yes. <laughs> yeah there's always something <laughs> Um, so let's say this is a swing. You connect it to two ropes here on on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, so if you push this swing slowly, well, it goes slowly, no problem, yeah. um, because it has a certain inertia. Uh, from here, you have a, a lever to the end, but from here you have a lever. So if you are in the exact middle, the levers cancel out mm -hmm. and you don't yeah. twist it. But when you have a lot of force mm -hmm. um, well let's let's first make it simpler if you have one lever connected to a rod here if you push it here close to the rod if it's clamped to the rod not much will happen except for this yeah. moving together but mm -hmm. if you push it on the other hand it will turn easily because you have the lever mm -hmm. exactly. or it has to clamp very very hard but well let's say it's just clamps mm -hmm. well same so if I hit this thing here slowly, it moves like this. But if I hit it hard, yeah. it will turn a little bit. Yeah. Well, the same is with two levers. If you have the, the swing with the child, mm -hmm. if you push it with a certain force, it will... Well, if you don't cross the force of, of, of how this is resisting it with its own inertia, its stiffness, etc., then it will yeah, start exactly. to swing just normally but if you hit it very hard and you're just off center which you always are because you're never yeah, you're never exactly in the, yeah. in the center yeah. then it will start to wobble yeah um, and that is a, a more chaotic movement that is uh well yeah it it it, it is a um, yeah it's a, eventually it will it restore another axis another oscillator, yeah. Another oscillator. Yeah. and um um what was i about to say um so yeah you know this was about the, the the hammer hitting the string i think or the yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah so exactly so if you if somewhere in your acceleration curve mm -hmm. you cross this amount of acceleration that makes this thing wobble then will you make it wobble yeah and it's of course dependent on the, on the kind of action the kind of hammer shank the yeah. kind of hammer because you, if you have a, a very heavy hammer then mm -hmm. it's it's harder to to make it wobble yeah uh, yeah, yeah, and even, um, well, you can make it wobble, but it, when the hammer itself uh, connects to the string, mm -hmm. it's, its inertia is, again, the main component of leveling it out. So, so the, the heavier and, um, yes, the heavier the hammer, the, the, the less you can actually mm -hmm. pass this wobbling yeah. to the next part. And, of course, this wobbling... Um, is something that you can sort of control it's of course very hard yeah but that's the, but still that's if you the, yeah if you, you you search for the right parameters if you are really experienced and you, you know what you're doing and you, you know exactly where to to push the key and, and yeah with what acceleration and, and and how hard and everything then yeah then uh there is a certain control a very specific kind of control that you can yeah um yeah, well, maybe we can we can use the the, the high speed camera with the linear induction motor that we have to edit that these yeah, kind of images. That would be in. very inter interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, well, this about sums it up for the for this video. Um, in our next video, we're going to talk a bit about um, uh, the actions, uh, the piano actions, um, different different kind of actions that we that we use the, the function of it, and. Um, we will also talk a bit about, um, or maybe that will be in the next in a, in, a, in the next video, but about uh, the, the the digital system that we are developing and uh, okay. the way that um, 
these interactions that we have in uh, acoustic pianos that we can um, uh, emulate them in a digital piano. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Great. Well, I hope that you uh, found this very uh, interesting. If you've made it uh, till the end, well, congratulations. You now know a lot more about the piano <laughs> than uh, uh, the average person. So, um, <laughs> well, cheers um, and see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.